What's up? What's up, warriors? What's up, body of Christ? What it do? What it do? This your girl. Probably this Vernon London. I'm in my natural state today. I got to do something in my head. I ain't going to do nothing to it today. So, no makeup. Got a little lip gloss on. This it. That's all I'm coming to encourage you today. I come to encourage you today to tell you as the world turns. You still got purpose and you still got a destiny. As the world turns, God have not forgotten about you. As the world turns, if nobody else shows up for you, you show up for you. As the world turns, don't give up on you and don't you dare give up on God. As the world turns, you keep pushing and you keep pressing. You keep on encouraging yourself. You keep on building. As the world turns, you have to still walk in your purpose and your destiny. Why? Because God has need of you. We all are a part of the body of Christ. As the world turns, God has not forsaken you. He has not forgotten about you. As the world turns, you better keep on showing up for you. Because it's going to keep on turning as the world turns. Keep on seeking God. Ooh, I came to encourage you today that you are a part of the body of Christ. And don't you dare give up on you. And how am I going to encourage you? I'm going to read this word and it's self-explanatory. And you can go and dig it out and search it out. Because why? God has purpose and a destiny designed just for you. Designed just for you. He knew you before he formed you in your mother's womb. God knew you. He know the hairs on your head. He know the color of your eyes. He know the stride in your hips. Like Maya Angelou say, baby, he know the arch in your back. Huh? He know the color of your hair. He know the how many strings. He know you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Your father knows you. And as the world turns, he wants you to keep on showing up for you. Amen. So I'm gonna read some I'm gonna read some scriptures just to encourage you with the word. So you can go and search it out for yourself or you could just listen at it because God wants you to know that you are a part of the body of Christ. You are a part of the body of Christ. You are a part of the body of Christ. Amen. Let's get into it. Okay. This is Romans chapter 12. And I'm not going to read some of it. It says, living sacrifices to God. Living sacrifices to God. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable perfect will of God. Serve God with spiritual gifts. It right there tells me that you have a purpose and you have a destiny. I might get preaching with you today. Hey, you have a purpose and you have a destiny. Hallelujah. Serve God with spiritual gifts. What are your spiritual gifts? What's your purpose? What's your destiny? Huh? But, but present your body to God as a living sacrifice holy acceptable to who to god that's your reasonable service okay for i say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you 
not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For we, for as we have many members in one body, but all members do not have the same function, we, so we, being many are one body. So we, being many but one body in Christ, and individually members of one another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Let us use them, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Our ministry, let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches is teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation. If you exhort, do it in exhortation. He who gives, give with liberty. But it says, he who gives with liberty. He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Behave like a Christian. That's the topic. Let love be without hypocrisy. Harbor, abhor, abhor, abhor what is evil. Throw it away. Rebuke it. Send it out. Cast it out. Cast out what is evil. But it say abhor what is evil and cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor. Pre, preference, preference in honor, giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fragrant in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, dis, dis, distributing to the needs of the saints. Given to hospitality. You know, they have hospitality. People that do hospitality. It says, listen at this. Bless those who prosecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live, peaceful, live peaceably with all men. If possible, live peacefully with all men. Beloved. Do not avenge yourselves. Why? But rather give place to want. Wait, it says, I'm sorry. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves. But rather give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. So, there, there, and so therefore, he's saying, Don't repay evil for evil. Vengeance belong to the vengeance belong to God. Let wrath has it have its place. Don't you do it. Let God do it. For if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For the people in the back that say, Oh, I ain't gonna do this or do that. This in the word. Baby, this is why he say do it. When you when you are obedient to God's word and you do what God's word say and you know you done done with God. Baby, if he if, if he hungry, see if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him give him a drink. For in so doing, 
will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Okay, now let's go to um 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm going to read it speedy in it so you can study it out for yourself. I'm giving you that word. Word is food for the soul. This is your blueprint. Listen at it. Let it play back. Let it get in your spirit and study it and hear what God is saying to you. Because you have a purpose. You have a destiny as the world turns. It's so much going on. But if you get up under that umbrella of protection. Oh my God. Get up under that umbrella. Spiritual gifts. Unity in diversity. And what is this saying to say? We are many members. We are many members, but we are one body. God have different diversities of gifts. Everybody that's in the body of Christ has a purpose and a destiny. Why? How do I know that? Because that's what the word says. The word says we are a many members. With different diversities of gifts. But we are one body. We are one body. We are the body of Christ. Come on now. Now concerning spiritual gifts. Brethren. I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles. Carried away to these dumb idols. However. You were led, therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse. No one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries but the same lord a lot of people be my here oh my church oh baby we are the body of christ we are a many members but we still are one body in christ and there are diversities of activities but it is the same god who works all in all but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For who? The profit of the saints. The profit of the one who has an ear to hear. You have a purpose and you have a destiny as the world turns. Don't forget this. For to one is given word of wisdom. That's a gift. Through the Spirit. To another, the to the to another the word of knowledge that's a gift through the same spirit to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healing by the same spirit to another working of miracles to another prophecy to another discerning of spirits to another to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things. But one and the same Spirit works all these things. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distribute, distributing to each one individually as he will as who will as god's will all right it says unity and diversity in one body that's the topic for as the body is one and has many members but all members of one body being many are one body. So also is Christ. For by one spirit. 
we were all baptized in one body, whether Jews or Greek, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For in fact, the body is not one member, but many members. Come on, Holy Spirit. If the foot should say, for you that don't understand, listen, listen, Linda, have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to you as the world turns. Listen, Linda, listen. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would, where would be the hearing? If the, if the whole were hearing, if the whole body was hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body, just as he pleased. Not man pleased, he pleased. Not man pleased, but as he pleased. <laughs> For the people in the back, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And if they were all one member, where would the body be? If one person can do everything, where would the body be? Oh, my God. <laughs> but now, indeed, there are many members, yet one body. And the eye, the eye, cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. My eye can tell my hand that it don't have no need of it. My eye need my hand and my hand need my eyes. I have I have no need of you, nor again the hand to the feet. I have no need of you, no, much rather those members of the body which seem to be weaker or necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, on these we bestow greater honor. And our un and our unpresentable, our unpresentable, our unpresentable parts have greater modesty. That's why he say we're well, modest apparel, but our presentable parts have no need. But that's not true. But our presentable parts have no need. But God composed the body, having given greater honor to that part which lacks it. That there should be no schisms in the body. That there should be no schisms in a body. That there should be no schisms in the body. But that the members should have the same care one for another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now you are the body of Christ. And members individually. And God has appointed these in the church. First apostles. Second prophets. Third teachers after that miracles. Then gifts of healings. Helps. Administration. Varieties of tongues. Varieties of tongues. Are all apostles, or all prophets, or all teachers, or all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healings? 
Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the best gifts. And yet I and yet I show you a more excellent way. And they was asking a question. Are our apostles, are our prophets, teachers, workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret the tongues? But earnestly desire the best gift, and yet I show you more a more excellent way that lets you know we all are a part of the body of Christ. I don't care if your church is in ten but two. I don't care if your church down in the in the swats. I don't care if it's up on top of the hill, on bottom of the hill, under the bridge, in the in the woods, in the back of the woods. We are the part of the body of Christ. We are a member. Um, we are a uh, many members, but one but one body. And see, that's where a lot of people get it twisted at because they think they God. They think they can tell this person. No, you no. We are all a part of the body of Christ. The eyes, you need your eyes to see. And some people can't see, but guess what? Their hands gonna guide them. So this to let you know your eyes need your hands. It's gonna be some type of way, whatever is if something going on and not nothing, you you need the parts of your body. We all are a part of the body of Christ. So that's just a parable that you know is many members. It's many, it's the a diversity of gifts, diversity of gifts in the fivefold. But we are many members. It ain't no one apostle, one prophet, one pastor, one teacher, one evangelist, one bishop, one elder, one deacon, one administrator. Oh, she, no, we are a many members with different diversities of gifts. Some people can work miracles. They got healing in their hand. They got wisdom. They got knowledge to give you. Baby, it's diverse. They different diversities of time. People speak in tongues to edify Christ. They got people that can interpret tongues. It's, it's different. It's a diversity, but we all one body. We are all of the body of Christ. Listen to this. Though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clinging symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and, th and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, but not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity when somebody else fall. Or when you fall. Or when somebody sees somebody else fall. Or in iniquity. It does not rejoice in it. But rejoices in the truth. Bears, love what? Bears all things. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. Endure all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, guess what? They will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. <laughs> whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part but when that which is perfect has come then that which is in part will be done away for we know in part and we prophesy in part nobody don't know it all. i don't care how they come where they live what they doing if all the juice all the oil flowing up out of they still prophesying in part why because we are a many member god ain't finna get out of one person 
He said, we are a many members. We are the body of Christ. And you can have whatever, but the greatest gift is love. Huh? For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, that's God. Then that which is in part will be done with. It will be done away. It says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also have known. And now about it, faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Huh? As the world turns. As the world turns. Baby, God ain't forgot about you. But you got to get in that word. You got to know that you got a purpose. You got to know that you got a destiny. They got people leading while bleeding. Why? Because they don't want to see nobody else do a work for God. Huh? They lean and they bleed now because they trying to do it all. They burnt out. They tired out. They bleeding out. They leading why they are bleeding. And they got people in their church that God want to use. But it's because he got a word in their belly. He got wisdom. He got knowledge. He got understanding. He, baby, it's a different diversity. It's it's a many members. Can't no one part. It ain't set up. To, it ain't set up like that. It's man want to set it up like that, but baby, it's God's will. This the word. This the word. What better way to know than the word of God? Let me read this. Prophecies and tongues. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. Ain't nothing wrong with you want to do a work for God. Ain't nothing as wrong with you as the world turns that you want to do work up. Uh, you want to work your purpose and your destiny, the will of God. Purpose and destiny cannot be bought. It's already in you. It's already in you. You got to seek. You got to seek. Why? Because it's already there. It can't be. It's already done, son. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. Huh? Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. But especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. Did you hear that? For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. That's why I Satan can't understand. When you get filled with the Holy Spirit, and you begin to boy can't see y'all. Oh, y'all see ha. Hey, you don't know what God got you speaking out, but it got to be real. Hey, y'all can't see. Hey, you. Ooh, Jesus. You don't know what God is doing. That's between you and God. And even when people are ministering, the mysteries of God is going out into the atmosphere, speaking with thus says the Lord. Oh, ah, I'm getting excited. Calm down, woman of God. Mm. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries, but he who prophesies speaks edification. 
and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he also prophesies, edifies the church. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. Huh? I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues. You know why he said that? Because people need to be uplifted. They need to be edified. They need to know as the world turns, they got a purpose and a destiny waiting on them. It's already inside you, boo-boo kitty. It's already there. It's, uh, it's there. Is needed. You can't stretch it out. You can't call it out. You can't dismiss it. Why? Because it's in this word. It's in this word. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues. Unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. And it'd be times when God used you to speak in tongues and you come back and you say what he is saying. But some stuff he ain't gonna let nobody interpret because it's between you and him and it ain't their business. If they know what you're talking to God about, baby, all your business will be exposed. God ain't gonna let nobody interpret everything that you say. You know why? Because it ain't their business. It's between you and God. It's a mystery. You could be talking to God about your personal business and they get it and go and run and tell, baby. God ain't gonna, if he don't want them to understand it, they ain't finna understand nothing. God is God. God is God. God is God. Don't get it twisted. Now, this is why God say tongues can be interpreted when you're speaking to somebody else. But when it's you and God, God ain't finna let nobody interpret what you're saying because that's, that's your time between you and God. That's your coming because he don't want nobody to know. But if I come in and I'm talking to you and I speak, God gonna allow me to say what I need to say. And if somebody else needs to be in, he gonna let it be known. It's a mystery. Tongues must be interpreted. But now, brother, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit? You, unless I speak to you either by revelation, by knowledge, by prophesying, or by teaching. Even things without life, whether flute or harp, when they make a sound, ooh, it's in your voice. You have a voice. It's in the sound of your voice. No matter if it's raspy, no matter if it's quiet, no matter if it's loud, God gave us different diversities of tongues. So when you say something, you say, oh, that's my daughter, strawberry. That's my daughter, cantaloupe. Oh, that's blueberry calling me. Why? Because he know your voice. Oh, that's my son, mechanic. Oh, that's my son, son, uh, Lil Blackie. Oh, that's my son, uh, Mr. King. Oh, that's my son over there. That's, that's, that's Brother Envelope over there. I got to go see him out because why? He know the sound of your voice. He know the sound of your prayer. He know the sound of your gift, your knowledge, your wisdom. If you are five-fold ministry, the gift going to speak for itself and it's going to make room. Why? Because you have a purpose and you have a destiny. You have hospitality. You got a word of wisdom. You got a word of knowledge. But you got to see God. Whether flute or harp, when they make a sound, unless they make a distinction, it's a distinction in the sound. 
My voice don't sound like your sound. A harp don't sound like a flute, and a flute don't sound like a harp. I don't sound like my husband, and my husband don't sound like me. I don't sound like my sister, my friend, my I sound like Verna. You sound like you, Sister Cranberry, Brother Cranberry, Brother Strawberry, Sister Stra. You sound like yourself. Unless they make a distinction in sounds, how will it be known what is piped or played? If you don't make a sound, how God gonna know your voice? How you gonna know when you're calling? How you gonna know when you're seeking Him for what's your purpose, your 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 your, your destiny? How you gonna know when you're speaking wisdom? Not and He could tell you what to say, baby. It's in the word. How will it be known what is piped or played? If you don't make a sound, how God going to know your voice? How he going to know if it's pipe? How he going to know if it's played? How he going to know if you're speaking in tongues or if you're speaking in a natural to somebody else? If you don't use your voice, if you don't get in that word, as the world turn, if you don't find out who you are. As the world turn, you are a part of the body of Christ. And can't nobody take that away from you. Why? They never gave it to you in the beginning with. How they going to take some away that they ain't give to you? How? I'll wait. For if the trumpet makes an uncertain sound, if Sister Strawberry make an uncertain sound, if Sister Watermelon, Sister Blueberry, Brother Blueberry, Brother Cantaloupe make an uncertain sound, who will prepare for battle? So likewise you, unless you utter by the tongue words easy to understand, how will it be known? What is spoken? For you will be speaking into the air. So if I come to you and I'm speaking and you, I'll be like, hey, girl, what's up? You don't know. You're going to be like, what in the world? No. Hey, how you doing? Praise the Lord. God told me to tell you such and such. God says such and such and such, but you're going to be speaking it plainly. And if you do speak in tongues, God going to let you interpret what you said. And then he going to let it be to somebody that understand it. But so that somebody don't understand, he's going to have to pick it plain and simple in a word of encouragement, a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge. Huh? For you will be speaking into the air. There, there are, it may be, so many kinds of languages in the world, and none of them is without significance. Therefore, if I do not know the meaning of the language, I shall be a foreigner to him who speaks, and he who speaks will be a foreigner to me. Even so you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church. Let it be for the edification. When you speak at church and people know that you feel like they, um, they know. If you know, you know. If you don't, they're just like when you go sit at the nail shop and they start talking out, you don't know what them people saying. Because it's an unknown language. They understand a little bit of what you saying. They can't even hardly understand what you're saying. They got to have somebody that really know English that's in there so they can literally tell them what you're saying. They'll be like, huh? They don't know what you're saying. What you say? They don't know what you're saying. You don't know what they saying, period, unless you know a little bit of their language. But to the fullness, you ain't going to understand that. It says edification of the church that you... They say, okay, say, even so you, since you are zealous for spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church. It has its place that you seek to excel, excel in the church, edification in the church, especially if you out and you feel with the Holy Spirit, you at church that pe people know because you are one of your sisters and brothers. We know. We are a part of the body of Christ, so I know you feel with the Holy Spirit. But somebody that's outside of it that don't know nothing about it, you got to talk to them. Uh, you got to give the prophecy or word of not or whatever you're doing. You got to talk plainly so they can understand what you're saying. Therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. Therefore, let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. So even if I do start doing it, God, tell me what you are saying to this person. And guess what? God going to tell me what I'm saying to that person. But you got to grow there. 
that take that that take that take that take growth. That take growth. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the spirit and I will also pray with the understanding. I will pray with the spirit and I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit and I will also sing with the understanding. Otherwise, if you bless otherwise if you bless with the spirit, how will he who occupies the place of the uniform say amen? At your giving of thanks, since he does not understand what you say. For you indeed give thanks well, but the other is not edified. I thank God I speak with tongues more than you all. Yet in the church, I would rather speak five words with understanding that I may teach others also than 10,000 words in a tongue. And that's all. I'm going to get up off of here. I've already been on here for 41 minutes. Subscribe. Sh uh, hit the subscribe. Comment. If you got any questions, leave a comment in the videos. But as the world turns, you got to keep on moving. As the world turns, you know that you are part of the body of Christ. As the world turns, you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth. Because I'm speaking to you what? With wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I just read to you what the words say. Plain and simple. If you want more understanding, go back and listen to it and study for yourself. Subscribe to the channel. Thumbs up the videos. It's not going to cost you nothing to thumbs up the video. It's not going to cost you nothing to like the video. It's not going to cost you nothing to subscribe to the channel. Get with the prayer warriors because why? We are the body of Christ.